Before we build and demo any content blocks, let me click the add block icon up here as you can see the many, many blocks available to us. Right now my most used category is expanded. So I'll collapse this and we can see that I've got seven categories here. You may have more or less depending on the plugins and such that you have activated on your own site. The most used contains ones that you would use most often such as paragraphs, headings, lists and so on. We'll get into things like media and text and gallery in just a little bit. Uh, common blocks is similar um, though we do have the cover option today that will cover quotes, things like that. Formatting, we have things like uh, working with custom HTML, working with code, working with tables, one of the great advantages to working with the uh, new block editor. Layout elements such as separators, buttons, columns. You can choose the number of columns you have on a page here, which is also really, really useful. Widgets, things like short code, archives, calendars, things that you found in the widget area of uh, your own WordPress site. Embeds, YouTube, video, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. And then finally, I've also got some Yoast structured data blocks, which we won't be working with today. So you can see there are a ton of content blocks available here in the new block editor you did not have available to you previously. In this session, we're going to be talking about types of content blocks in the new Gutenberg block editor. So let's go ahead and begin. We'll start by adding a title. So here is the title of our page, Types of Content Blocks. This is not our header. This is not our H2 header. So in addition to having a title, you're going to want to start off your page with an actual header. In this case, we'll use the exact same text. We'll go to the block just below it and click Add Block. We'll make this a heading. We'll stick with that H2 header and we'll paste this in again. Now let's do a preview of this so we can see what it looks like, so we can see that we're not simply repeating the same headline twice. And here we are. We've got the title of our page here, but we've got our H2 header, our first header right here. So in addition to working with that title block, make sure you add a header block after it. One more quick thing and we'll move on. I'm going to quickly publish this. And when I do that and click inside the title block, I've got my permalink up here. Now this is the URL for this page, but in addition, you have an edit button over here that you can use to edit the last part of this URL. This is called the slug. You want your slug to contain the keywords that fit in well with your article. So the title of your page, the slug of your page, which is the last section of your URL, both need to match up with the actual content of the rest of your page using keywords that match your page content well. Let's keep going. Just below this, we have by default a paragraph block. So we'll simply type in, this is a paragraph block. We'll add a simple image block next, and then we'll work on some permutations of that. Several ways to get to your next block. If I hit enter, it's going to start a new block for me. This icon will also add a block. And this icon will also add a block. What I want to do now with this block is I'm clicking it to see my types. I'm going to start with a simple image. So I'll click image. I'm going to upload an existing image and I will use this one right here. It's uploading. And so there's my image. So there's to add a simple image. So these are our first two types of blocks, text and image. Let's delete this one. I'm simply selecting and hitting delete. And let's try another type of image block. I'll hit enter again to start a new block. I'm going to hover over this and choose the add block icon. This time I'm going to choose media and text. And what this allows me to do is upload a media file such as a picture on this left side and then put my content on the right. So it's both a media block and a text block and together they're called a media and text block. 
So in this case, I've already got my image uploaded into the media library. So I'll simply go to the media library, select my image. I already have my alt text there. So I'll click select. And then in my content, my text content, if I want to flip around the text and the media, I click inside my content block and I use one of these two icons so I can flip them so that the text is on the left or the media is on the left. I can also, again, clicking first inside my content block, I can work with whether it needs to be stacked on mobile, meaning you're going to have the image followed by the text or the text followed by the image. And if I click inside the text bit of this, I can also manipulate my text um, font size, whether I want to drop cap, what my colors are, and so on. So that's a text and media block. Again, I'll simply hover just below my existing block and use this plus to create a new block. This time I'm going to choose gallery. And these are pre-existing images, so I don't need to upload them. I'll go to my media library and I'll choose these six matching images. Create a new gallery and insert my gallery. Now I have an image gallery and this is what it looks like. I'm gonna add a cover next, a cover you can think of as a visual header, a largely horizontal image and text that you can use to introduce your end user to that page. And I want it to come just below my title so I'm going to hover over my title towards the bottom part until I get the add block option. I'll click that and I'll type in the cover. Here is my cover content block. I'll upload it. The Gutenberg WordPress blocks is what I want to use. So I'll click that. And after a few seconds, this image appears along with a text box in the middle. So I'll put in type of content blocks and this is yet another type of image and text option for content. Let's add a table block next. Again, I can go to the icon on the upper left hand corner here or I can hover below my last block to get that plus add a block icon. I'll click add block. I'll type in the first few letters for table. And here it is, so I'll click the table option. I have my option of number of columns, number of rows. We'll stick with two and two to create four cells, and I'll click create. And here's our blank table. Now I can add text to these cells simply by typing or cutting and pasting into them. Notice that my cell size change as I paste this text in. I can keep my table settings at fixed width table cells or not. Notice that if I get rid of the text on the right cell here and then choose fixed width table cells, it's going to make them the same size. So if you want your table cells to be the same fixed widths, then you make sure and click table settings and turn fixed width table cells on. We'll put our text back in here. Now there's seemingly um, no way to add images to tables here. And I think that WordPress prefers that we use the text and media content plot to do so. However, if you want to add an image into a table, you click inside the cell and then over here next to the bold italics and link, you have a drop down and we have inline image here, which will take us to our media library. And then when we choose an image, we'll just kind of choose one at random here. It goes into the cell. So you can add images to tables. You simply use this pull down next to the bold italics and link options. You can also add HTML directly into a table, though be aware the HTML in a table can be tricky. You click inside your cell or click inside the table somewhere, go to the three dots, more options icon, and then choose edit as HTML and you'll get the HTML for the table right here. To switch it back to visual mode for editing, you simply go up to the three dots and choose edit visually. Let's work with embeds next. This is for embedding videos and similar types of media. I'm gonna 
hover over my last block till I get this add block icon here on the left. I'll click that and rather than use the search bar, which I've been using previously, I'm gonna collapse the most used and see that we have a whole category here for embeds. This includes YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, WordPress, Vimeo, all sorts of options here. I'm gonna choose the most used YouTube and I'll simply put in my YouTube URL here. I'm not working with the embed code given to me by you by YouTube, simply the URL. I'll click embed. And there is our embedded YouTube video. We'll go to the columns content block next. Now I can add columns within an existing one column page, but that might be a little confusing. So I'm gonna go to a new page here that simply has the title content block filled in, and we're gonna add columns below this. I go to my add block option. I'll type in COL to get to columns. And here's our columns option. I'm given two columns by default, and if I wanna just work with two columns, I'm fine. I'm gonna quickly paste in some placeholder text here so you can see what that looks like. If I want to add a third column to this, I left click just to the right of my two column blocks here. It can be a little tough to find, but you know you've got it if both of your column blocks are chosen when you do that left click. Once they're chosen, here in the block editor, I can choose the number of columns, so I can go up to three columns and add some more text here and continue doing so up to six columns. So the way to add columns is to click just to the right left click just to the right of my column blocks and then adjust the number of columns here in my block editor. Sadly, there is no way yet to edit the size of individual columns, but I suspect that is a option that will be coming very soon. If I want to add images to these columns, I can do so by choosing where I want the image to go with my cursor and then using the trick we used a couple of minutes ago just to the right of our bold italics and link icons. My pull down gives me the inline image option and I can then choose an image from my image library and insert it into the column. So that's how to work with columns. We're back to our original page of content blocks for WordPress. Let's work with a button next. I'm gonna click add block. I'm gonna type in the first few letters for button. We're not gonna work with max buttons, but we will work with the button block that comes with the newest incarnation of WordPress. I can add my text for my button here. I'll put CSU extension. With that button selected, I can work with the style of the button to make it clear or squared. I can change the background colors of the button and I can change my text color as well. The actual URL for the button goes right here. And here's that URL to CSU extension. So I simply click apply to apply that to the button. Up here in the upper left-hand toolbar, I can center this button, right align it, or if I choose my text, I can also bold and or italicize it. I'll go to a center button and continue. We'll work with one last type of block here, the pull quote block. So I'll go to my add block icon. I have pull quote right here in the middle, though I could search for it using the search bar here. I'll simply click pull quote. So I'll simply paste in my quote where it says write quote and then paste in my citation as well. And over here in my block editor, I can go with the default view, which we have now, or I can just make it one solid color. I can change my color settings and I can change my text color as well.